Hello there guys, welcome to Goxanut Gaming. Today we're playing Gary's mod. And uh, before we just piss about and have some fun, I thought I'd do a little tutorial video got running through all the basic functionalities. Because looking online, a lot of the ones I've found, they're just music playing in the background and a bit blurry, so I thought I'd do a nice clear one. So to start off, I'll go through the the binding tools, as I like to call them. So we've got the axis tool, which is, if you imagine taking this here, putting a giant stake through it, and it can just spin around the stake kind of thing. And so the point you shoot the object will be the point at which this nail is driven through it, like so. And to bring up this menu, by the way, you hold down Q, and then shoot where on the wall or another object you want it to attach and as you can see it is now attached to the wall if I use my physics gun I can spin it around but I can't drag it off the wall no matter how hard I try so that's that now attached alternatively if you want to be able to control how it moves you can click the motor tool which works exactly the same as the axis apart from it acts as if you attach a thruster to it so here you can see forwards is the 9 key on the keypad, 7 is the reverse key on the keypad and you've got all these various options which if you highlight them you can see a little thing comes up explaining them in more detail for you so if I was to shoot that in the same place shoot on the wall again then 7 and 9 act as a motor to spin it around the point in which we've connected them the last one of the binding tools is the... Oh, I've lost it. Where have you gone? Ah, oh, the ball socket. And so if I was to click there, and then shoot a wall... Oh, I forgot. My bad, let me undo that. With the ball socket, it won't teleport like those do. You actually have to place it in the position you want it first. So if I do that... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, right click with the physics gun to freeze it in place use the ball socket, connect the two where I want them connected and then release it, you can see that it's acting as if it's connected by that point around a ball oops, just wiped myself out of the way and I can't drag it away from the wall again but it's most definitely connected by that point on an axis now there is an advanced version of this which I won't run through here but um, it basically, using these sliders, you can make it so... Oops, didn't mean to actually shoot then. You can make it so you might not be able to move it left and right, only up, down, or, you know, you make me make it so you can only swivel it, say, like, that far, and then it gets stuck with a constraint. So, you know, there's lots of things you can do with that. <coughs> so next I shall move on to the rope keys. Now, pressing space will allow you to move off the ground and holding shift will allow you to zoom and uh, so yeah let's start with the rope tool all of these I've just frozen in the air normally uh, so if I grab the rope tool you can choose what style of rope you like but I'll just stick with bog standard rope for now so if I shoot the top of that and my little ceiling I've made here and then unfreeze that you can see it's now just dangling by itself but no matter what I do oops, oops no matter what I do, I can't extend the uh, length of that rope. It will always be a rigid rope. Now one thing to note with all of these is if you do click the rig rigid constraint, that this little checkbox here, that means you can't actually make it shorter either. Whereas if I was to... Ooh, wait for that to calm down. Uh, freeze that up there. Oh, what's going on? freeze that up there. If I was to uncheck, uh, uncheck, uncheck rigid and actually have the rope tool selected and then shoot on here unfreeze that as you can see I can now it won't go past the maximum but I can make it up, go up and down as you would be able to with an actual rope. So as you can see it just kind of goes saggy when you move it up but the maximum it will ever go is the distance you've specified before. Now the next one is elastic and it works exactly the same way as a rope 
as in it will just about maintain the height but as you can see if I do that it bounces a bit more and the thing about this is you can pull it past what you've done but the, the uh, thing about elastic is it always pings back to its original length so you can use that to make stuff like giant slingshots you know catapults um, you can use it in making a makeshift car as part of a, uh, a body with all the um, wheels joined up and stuff but uh, the next type is the let's do the winch next so the winch works exactly the same as a rope but as you can see we've got two buttons in the winch eight will make it go down or whatever you set it to and five will make it go up so you can use that for making little cranes you know there's loads of stuff you can do with it um, next type of rope is the slider now the thing to note about the slider is gravity does affect it so you can see it's just dropped straight down as I've released it but I can move it up and down and here I am trying to move it left and right it won't move off that so what you've got to imagine this line as is just a solid you know monorail or whatever and your object won't move off that path it will just constantly go in a straight line you know wherever you set it to um, the next type is the hydraulics just release that and then so when I press the one key and then press, oh no I've done that in the wrong direction oh no there we go I've got the distance set too far let me just put this down yeah one thing to note is make sure you don't have your settings set too high when you're trying to do little things So yeah, as you can see that one there affects how far it stretches up and down so if I do that again you can see it expands out then after a while if I press it again it expands in press it expands out press it expands in so that can be made to make doors you know um, if you ever wanted a little assault course you could have it to be like obstacles where people can press buttons to move stuff I'll explain buttons in a second. A very similar one to that is the muscle tool. If I just move the distance down on that. And if I unfreeze that and press the button, as you can see, whereas pressing the button there only does it once, doing it on the muscle tool just causes it to keep going. I'm not pressing anything at the moment, it's just expanding and contracting by itself and last but not least with ropes we have the pulley tool now as you can imagine with a pulley you're connecting you'd be connecting an object you want to maybe move to a weight and then having it going off the ceiling somewhere so you shoot your first object you then need to hit, shoot a, a surface that you want to pulley them off twice to act as uh, two points of connection or you know whatever you want to call it and then you shoot your second object and as you can see it creates a nice little end shape or you know whatever direction you're doing it from if I unfreeze those if I move that one up that one goes down if I move this one down that one goes up just as you'd expect a pulley to work out like alright next I shall move on to uh, we've got the magnetize tool which means it's not it's more just a piss about kind of tool. I've never really found an effective use for it but as you can see I made it a magnet and now when I move a metal object up to it it gets stuck but then if I use an object like this it doesn't get stuck which is where you can use the physical properties tool you can change stuff to all these different physical properties and if I hit the metal shoot the baby and now move it onto that the baby is now stuck to it as well and as you see it's just like yeah I suppose you could make a, a crane with that so if you combine the uh, the winch with a magnet you could use it to pick up metal things on the floor uh, next uh, we've got the remover tool which as you can imagine just removes stuff nice for keeping your scene nice and clean we've got the balloons tool which uh, I'll just remove one of these Z is undo by the way so with the balloons tool you can pick the colour of your balloon up here 
shoot a balloon on it and it floats. If you find that one balloon isn't enough to make something float, adding another balloon will increase it. And then if I zoom up and try and shoot the balloons, eventually that will come back down, seeing as it's only on one now. Oh, I can't see my crosshair. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, it's coming back down now. Uh, next, I'll show you how to just make a very, very basic car. So, I've got a bed frame. If I give myself, if I move to the vehicles tab up here, you can use all these Half-Life Two vehicles. The Jeep and the airboat are just pre-existing vehicles that you can steer, just like you can in Half-Life Two. But in this case, we're trying to make our own. So, if I just add a seat, which, as you can see, you can actually sit in. Pressing Control will let you move into third person or the duck button if you don't have it set as control if I move that on there and then I'm going to use the weld tool using weld shooting both objects will now mean that they're connected so just think of it as super glue then I'm gonna freeze this in the air a little bit now when you're moving stuff in the air holding shift and E will allow you to to uh, move it at angles so you can get it exactly straight holding E by itself will let you just move it lightly like that and that's with m using the mouse I'm just spinning that but yeah holding shift will allow you to do it at rigid angles so if you know you want it to be exactly straight then that's the way you can do that so I'm now going to use the wheel tools that's a bit big over here you can see what type of wheels you want to use so I've got my two movements here, forward is 8, reverse is 5 so if I just try and find a slightly smaller wheel that'll do now one thing you'll notice is these wind wheels are currently going in reverse whereas that chair is clearly facing that way so if I walk up to them closely press the E button or whatever your use button is I can set them the right way and these ones are going the right direction so you can now see if I press E they start moving. I might have my, my torque set a little bit too fast there but it doesn't really matter too much. So if I quickly do this, sit on my chair, hit control and then, oh I'll probably be easier to see like this. As you can see I'm now moving forward. I mean the only problem at the moment is I've got nothing to steer with so I'm going all over the gaff. So if I get out again now, uh, one way you can make yourself steer, it's a very makeshift way. Um, of course, the ideal thing would be to put these wheels onto uh, two little panels which you can steer left and right, which I'll maybe show you in a later tutorial because it's a bit more advanced. But the very, very basic way to do it is use, to use the thrusters. Now, one thing you could say, a good way to show you what the thrusters do, is if I just stuck a thruster, oh, I've got my power set a little bit too high there. Let's put it down to a thousand. Uh, move it on to seven and nine. If I just put a thruster on the back of that and press seven, as you can see, it now effectively turns my axis into a motor. But another thing that can be used for, as you can imagine now, is if I just stick one on the sides here, every time I use that, I'm going off in that direction. And that's a little bit too powerful as it just blew the car into oblivion. So I've maybe put it down to there. How's that? That's a bit better. So if I now start driving, as you can see, I'm now able to roughly pick my direction so I'm using the, the 8 and the 5 to go forwards and back and I'm using the 7 and the 9 to move left and right so you know that is a, the most basic self-made car I think you can make in this game but uh, yeah so I think that's most of the you've got some more obvious stuff like dynamite oh yeah that's it I was just going to show you the buttons so if I say stick a bit of dynamite there as you can see the one key is set to blow it up and be careful because you can kill yourself with it so yeah if I was to stick dynamite here put that there if I was to then get buttons and put that there 
if I press E, it doesn't work. But if I was to then set the dynamite button here to the exact same button that the dynamite is using, and then put, oh, wrong tool, uh, buttons, and then press E. Oh no, I've just blown myself up. And so, yeah, the way buttons work then is every time you press a button which um, is selected on what it, the number that something else uses, so if I was to look at the winch for instance, 8 and 5, so if I set one button here to 8 and one button here to 5, one thing to note is that button there, despite me changing it to 5 here, is still selected as 8. So what have you, whatever you've already placed isn't affected by settings you then cha uh, change. So if I now hold down that, you can see that that's lowered down. And if I now hold down this, oh, it's not worked. Why has it not worked? Oh no, it is working. I've just obviously done it too much. Go higher, go higher. Which way is down? Decrease length, five. Right, it's just, I've obviously done it too much. I know why. It's because the car's been linked to it, so every time I've been accelerating with the car, with the 5 key, that's been a... Uh, I think, my, yeah, as you can see, the car's going crazy at the moment. I'm controlling my car with these buttons over here. But yeah, so yeah, that's the reason the winch hasn't worked. But uh, that's, that, that's rather embarrassing. But um, yeah, so that is the main things. Now one thing I could do to my car now is make it a hover car. If I can find where it's gone. Oh, I think I've sunk it. That is the nice thing about this though, you can just pick stuff up. Especially when you've all welded it together. Yeah, land the right way, nice. So if I now get the hover ball, I must just shoot these. The thing to note about the hover ball is, if I now press the button, as you can see, it's messed up a little bit. So, what, one thing you need to do with the hover balls is to make sure you're placing them at equal. Bloody hell. Stop messing up. At equal bearings around the model, because then it will have a nice even hover. So, if I now unfreeze that, and it's completely messed up, yay! But that's because I've. Um, Oh, let me just undo those hovers. That's because I did those ones first. If I just quickly do it again while they're all on the same field. There you go. That's better. And now, one thing to note there is, as you can see, my wheels are useless because they're not touching the ground. But, the thruster can still move. So, if you want to make a hub flying car, what you want to do... Put thruster on the back, thruster on the side, and now I've got a flying car. Now to move in the air, you do need to have quite powerful thrusters, as you can see, I'm not moving that far. So if I was to get out quick, put my thrusters up to 3000 instead, and put those on. And get back in. Oh, what have I done? And I can see I'm moving a little bit faster now. And I can still move up and down as I'm going. But yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to change the keys for that one there. That's why I was just spinning in circles. But yeah, that is the basic functionality. In a later video, I'll go over how to use ragdolls, which are the... Uh, if you don't know what a ragdoll is, it's the people. How to put them in realistic poses and stuff. But that is really the basic functionality. There are other tools there, as you can see, like Ignite, just set stuff on fire. But they're they're kind of either too easy to explain, or not re don't really do much. So you know you've got decorative stuff with lights and lamps. You've, um, no, oh yeah, no collides. That's a good one. Uh, as you can see here. Uh, oh, that's a slider. My bad. If I was, oh, but yeah, everything's rigid. There you go. As you can see, these are bashing into each other at the moment. But if I was to quickly just use the no collide tool, shoot them too. If they stop moving, 
Did I hit them? No. No collide. Out. That one and that one. As you can see, they're now passing through each other. So that can be used to make slightly more intricate models by combining several things into one. Um, oh, this is a quick one. Yeah, colours. As you can see, just quickly set your colour, put it up right, and you can just change the colour of things. One thing to note is if you slide this one, which is the opacity, or the alpha as it's sometimes called, right down to the bottom, you can make things invisible, which can be good for having an object which, as you can see, is still there, but not being able to see it. Uh, material, as I'm sure you can imagine, changes the material of things, which can be combined with, uh, well that's not a good one, but um, it can be combined with colours, so as you can see that's green there, but normally it should be red. Uh, paint you can use to draw on the floor, but it's a bit, it's not great. After a while, it's, if I draw enough, you'll see it just starts disappearing at the end. Uh, or not, apparently. Oh well. If you go, keep going long enough, it will start disappearing. But uh, tr uh, cameras you can use to film stuff. So if I was to do that, as you can see, I've right clicked that so it follows an object around. So if you want to make a video like this, if I was to press zero now, I can do that, which is weird because you can still control yourself. So as you can see, I'm now filming myself moving the object around. Woo. Just like that. And it's still going. Um, and yeah, that is it. Trails is... Um, just gives you a little follow you around of a trail. But yeah, that is the basic functionality of Gary's Mods. And the ne in the next video... I'll be joined again by Ed, and we'll have a special guest, Dean Butt. So we'll be Cox Nut and Butt Gaming. Um, and we'll just be fucking around with the basic functionality, showing you what kind of weird and wacky things you can make and do, and what uh, with just basic functionality. And then in later videos after that, we're going to start downloading mods and showing you where you can get them from to see, show you what kind of things are possible within Gary's mod if you explore further than the basic functionality. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this and found it helpful, like like it, subscribe, comment below if you think I've missed anything that you'd like me to explain in further detail. And uh, yeah, see you later guys.